John Scully has always wanted to be really helpful, you know, to others from the time he was very young, from the time he was in college. So it gave him a great opportunity when he met up with Reverend Farlow, and Reverend Farlow was very eager to pull people over into the Richmond area. And so he said, you know, you want to start something? And I said, yes, I do. So I was excited because I got to name it. I got to name it Making Waves. And they were called Wave Makers. And I love that because I wanted them to have a sense of power, that they could make things happen. Back in 1989, the district entered bankruptcy and uh, Richmond High School, Kennedy High School were really affected dramatically. The kids were affected. And you could see that on top of everything else that was going on in Richmond, now the kids aren't gonna have their schools. So I said, well, I better pick up the pace here. And I got a hold of uh, Reverend Farlow and he suggested after school, two, three, four times a week, day trips, take them to a museum, et cetera. And that was the beginning of Making Waves. The biggest thing was just having a place to go and having people who were like-minded. I was in a room with 20 other people who were there, driven, trying to go and be everything that I was trying to be. I really gained confidence knowing that a bunch of people that were not related believed in me. The tutors that they had available, they were phenomenal. They made me feel that they wanted to see me succeed. The tutors who were people of color as well, you know, like in college, it was, you know, all that was inspiring. It was empowering for me to like, okay, we can do this and they have our backs. The scaffolding that was offered by Making Waves actually did make a difference. The opportunity to go to a private school did make a difference. So for me, John Scully's generosity opened the door to show the possibility of what it looks like to get out of poverty, to see the other side of what education could offer. Um, and definitely painted a picture that was worth aspiring to. Ms. Shirley, who was the very first uh, executive director of Making Waves who brought us in, she was so important in my life. Like she was almost like a second mother to me in terms of the, the focus that she had for us, the goals that she had for us, the love that she had for us. But I told them, this is just the beginning. You're gonna have opportunity after opportunity from now on. In the early 2000s, we started talking about the fact that there was a real limit to how many kids we could serve, especially as more and more matriculated to college. We started talking about the possibility of shifting to a charter school model. At that time, our executive director, Glenn Holsclaw, who had been with the organization a number of years already, he had a really a keen understanding of the kinds of obstacles that children in uh, low-income urban communities face and also what needed to be done to really help those obstacles not become sort of permanent barriers. So he helped lead this step toward a charter school. And so we opened our charter school in 2007. That has really allowed us to heighten our impact in Richmond and the surrounding cities. So Making Waves Academy is a public charter school, uh, which is great. That means it's accessible to all members of the public. Seeing this campus be built for our students, uh, that state-of-the-art 21st century learning spaces, for students of the demographic we serve is pretty fantastic. Many of the communities uh, that we serve, uh, particularly this, this one in Richmond, academically students are not on pace to be able to do college level work, so they're not deemed college ready. And so we know that we have to address the academic piece. So we do a really great job of really trying to catch kids up and the kids who are ready, making sure they accelerate. The other thing that we do really well though is that we recognize that there's a series of, of external factors that sort of impinge on families. And sometimes it's the effects of trauma, sometimes it's the effect of abuse and neglect, sometimes it's hunger. Uh, so we have a lot of wraparound services in terms of our approach to make sure that those things that need attention get attention so that the students can focus on learning when they're here at school with us. We know that less than 11% of students from our demographic, low-income demographic, graduate from college by the time they're 24. 
all of us at um, Making Waves really understood that the point was not entrance to college, but exit from college with a degree. By the time the 12th wave graduated from Making Waves Academy, the first class there, we had really developed a very robust college success program. It's called CAP. CAP provides a scholarship for our students, coaching, which we think is a key ingredient to our student success, financial literacy help, and we do professional development with our students. We're really trying to affect the length of time students are in college, the debt that they owe after college, and their readiness for career or graduate school once they graduate. When you're the first person in your family to go to college, you don't necessarily have someone to turn to to ask questions about, how do I navigate with my roommate? Where do I go if I want to change my major? What is a bursar's office? Who's the ombudsman? All the kinds of just understanding a college campus questions is what our coaches are able to help students navigate. I had a family emergency my very, very first year. Uh, made me feel as though I wasn't going to be able to continue school. Um, and my college coach was just encouraging me that I can talk to my professors, maybe, you know, move the finals to a different day where I'm more, you know, mentally prepared for those exams. It was definitely one of the moments that made me feel as though I may want to quit, but thanks to the CAP program, it encouraged me to stay and know that I can make it. I'm a first generation student. I think it was my transition into college was really tough, but with um, Making Waves constant support and help, I think that it was easy at the end to uh, graduate with a GPA that I thought was good, so. If you have not got a college degree in this environment, in this economy, it's troubling, it's difficult. So as we take these kids, we want them to already start high on that hill. I went to high school, I did well. I went to college, I did well. I got a good first job, I'm ready to rip. Our graduates from Making Waves Academy go right from the academy into CAP and into college. And we can see that the persistence rate of students in the CAP program is 86% at their junior year. And so we are thrilled and quite proud of that because compared to the graduation rate of students of this income level, it's astounding. In fact, it's even astounding compared to the graduation rate of all Americans. Every year we're trying to get better at what we do so we can serve students better and we can serve more students because the impact of our work is changing our students' lives, our families' lives, and greater communities. Our hope for the future is that we can continue to help more and more students. We just feel that all children deserve that level of education. And I think one of the reasons we're not deterred is that we know the problem is solvable because what everybody calls an achievement gap is actually just an opportunity gap. And if students have robust opportunities, they can and do succeed. And we have been proving that for 30 years. Um, right now I'm going to be doing a summer internship in biopharmacy um, and drug discovery. And then from there, we're hoping that we can get into a PhD program. Now that I graduated, we are in the process of creating a counseling center for um, immigrants at a law firm. So now we're, um, I'll be part of the, the starting team that is going to develop this and hopefully become something great for the city of Oakland and the Bay Area in general. For folks like myself, folks that come from Richmond, where you're low income, you're a person of color, your only option is education. You're not going to have credibility unless you have that education behind you. To be able to be a part of that, to be able to say I'm a wave maker is something that I appreciate, it's something that I'm grateful for, it's something that gives me joy, and it's something that I believe is going to be great another 30 years from now. So thank you, Making Waves, I appreciate that. This is possible in one generation to take you out of some difficult situations and into a post-college, prosperous and meaningful life. And that's very rewarding for me, to know that there are those who, because of their experience with us, 
will always be lifting as they climb. I am a wave maker. 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 I am a wave maker.